Hello. I've come on today to do the binding on my 100 days project. Um, we're going to do something called a slip knot binding. It is uh, not something I developed. It is something I found on the internet. I will be putting a link to where I found it so that you can find it. I cannot remember exactly right now whose um, binding it is, but I know that it's very well um, shown in there. Uh, I think it's a blog post. Uh, this project is called the 100 Days Project, the 100 Day Project, and I did this book for 2019. Um, this particular binding is designed to allow single sheets to be bound and to lay flat. Um, this is something that I worked on this year and did not get finished until just now, but I thought that you would like to come, maybe come on this journey with me and see how I bound this book. Um, I hope that you will enjoy this video. I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. I hope that if this kind of videos are to your liking, you will subscribe and hit that little bell notification button so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Let's get on and get this book bound. Talk to you later. Okay, so I have all my pages for my book in order. And as I said, we're going to make a, do a binding called the slip knot binding. Um, but it is also for binding single pages. Now this is watercolor paper. It's nice and heavy. Um, it doesn't work on a lightweight copy paper type um, page. It works great for cardboard and book board and that kind of thing. You want to keep your pages in order. You want to keep everything in order. But what we're going to do is we're going to start from the back. Um, I am going to turn the whole thing over like so. And start from the back. Okay? Because I want to have the tails of my thread on top. So I'm going to work this from the back. Now, I'm going to use wax linen. This is three cord wax linen in a brown color. And I have cut long pieces, pretty long. They, I would say they're about uh, six or seven feet and they're folded in half. And you need one piece of eat, one piece for each hole. Okay? Um, I may have to figure out how to get this. I have also added a page of a blank page on the front and the back because I want to write a little bit about the project. Um, as I work with this, I'm going to take it off my pile to the left here. Let me move this back a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to flip it like so because we will be working always from the front of the page but from the back of the book to the front. So um, each hole, as I said, has to have a um, a folded cord. Okay? Now I'm going to bring you in very close so that you can see the actual stitching. Oh, that's a little too close. You can't see the whole board. Okay. That should do it. Let's put something white underneath. Or almost white. I think maybe that will help. Okay, so I have roughly seven feet folded right in half. I'm going to take that little loop and I am going to go... down. Let me see if I can hold it. There we go. Down through the hole. 
and I'm going to bring my little threads through that. Can you see? That little loop, okay? Like so. See the loop? So that when I pull it, my thread is coming up And my loop is in that position. Now, this is the inside of the back cover. This is the outside of the back cover. So, I take my next thread. I have it folded. I'm going to go down through this one. Now, I have almost 50 pages to bind, guys. So, um, this amount of thread is not going to be enough. I will have to add to my... But see how it's coming up through this hole now? Okay. And each hole needs its own thread. Where I folded it, the wax isn't quite as stiff, so it's just wanting to not go through the hole. And you want to pull it snug. You don't want to pull it so tight that you're tearing your paper or your cards, cardboard, but you want to pull it snug. Okay, so now I have three pieces pulled up through the hole, okay? So I'm going to take my next page and I'm going to turn it over. Okay. And I'm going to take the ends of my thread. I'm going to go through the hole from the front top of the page to the back and then I'm going to pull apart these two pieces from where I put it in the hole, can you see that? And stick it in the middle. Okay? And then as I pull it, oh, okay, there we go. It'll pull down. It takes a bit to get the first couple in there, okay? Okay, now we're going to do that all the way across. Put these two through the hole from the top to the back, and then split these threads and pull this through. Sorry if I'm moving it out of frame. I apologize. Once you get the first couple done, it works a lot easier. Okay, there we go. Now you want these threads to lay smoothly side by side, so we're going to just snug them up. Make sure you go through between those last two, okay? All right, now we're going to take, this is our very last numbered page. We're going to turn it over. Now see, now that we've got a couple of pages in there, it's not going to be so hard. One of the things you want to do is when you start splitting this thread, you want to make sure that it it lays in there neatly. We don't want to get it twisted around like that. We want it open. See that? Okay. So 
So we're going to go through this hole from the top to the back. And then we're going to go between these threads and pull. I highly recommend you work one hole at a time so that you don't get everything tangled up. You want to pull it snugly, but there again, do not rip it. Your paper can take some squashing down, but it cannot take a lot of abuse. So we're just going to pull. We're not going to yank. Now, if I didn't tell you this, this is not my original um, binding technique by any means. It's been out there. I've used it on other books. I just did not do a close-up tutorial. Sorry about moving it out of the frame. That happens when we are in tight. Okay? Remember that when we pick up our next page, we want to flip it over. Okay? Just because we're working from the back to the front does not mean that we aren't keeping our pages perfectly in order. We gotta really make sure. Now, if you were binding a blank book, it wouldn't matter. Now, as you snug these up, you don't you want to make sure too that your pages are lining up top to bottom so that everything is kind of inside the cover of the book and lined up What I'm doing is I'm just constantly trying to keep the left thread on the left, the right thread on the right. I'm snugging it as I go. Waxed thread really makes a difference in this project. Now I have got a lot of um, pages to go, but I want to do one more thing. I'm going to take one more page. I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to bring you in so that you can, as close as I can get it, so that you can see exactly. And I'll just move the book as I do it. I'm going to do this one more time, letting you watch. Okay, see I've got these pulled apart like that. I'm going to put my two ends from the front to the back. And then I'm going to go through and pull it. Okay, I'll snug that up in a minute. Go into the next one. This is the middle hole. You see how you pull it apart. Make sure you got your right and left ones going where, oops, I'm sorry, pulled it too far down. Oops, I'm off frame, I'm sorry. 
it's hard when I want you to see exactly what's happening with something tiny. Okay, now we're going to snug all of these up. I'm just going to pull on it a little bit. Okay. Now so far you can see, uh oh, let me see here. There we go. It may be out of focus. Let's give it Okay, so this is going to look like a little row of loops going up my piece. I'm going to back back out. All right. And I am not going to make you sit and watch me do 48 more pages. Okay, so when I get towards the front, I'll show you the last few. And when I have to tie together, I will be popping back in. To tie it together okay so I'll be back okay I'm not even half done yet but I have come up a, on a tip I wanted to make sure I told you about um, when mender when you go down through here okay when you go to pull this tight if you will pull one thread at a time and keeping the right thread on the right and the left thread on the left, that will help you to keep your th threads open here for the next stitch. Okay? Um, it's just every time you do that, it just opens up that stitch, that, that place where you have to go between these threads. So again, when I do it like that, then I'm just going to pull on the right and pull on the left and it just keeps the right and left threads lined up. Okay, that was the tip. I'm going to just keep working here. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> this took a while. This is a lot of pages. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't think I'm going to have to add any um, pieces to my binding threads. Now, I used uh, between 7 and 8 feet folded in half. And I will, when I finish, have 53 pages and 2 covers. So, the fact that I didn't have to use any binding threads is... I just think that I, I don't think most of the time you would run into a problem with binding threads. But... I just wanted to give you a little idea of how you would go about attaching them. What I would do is I would just tie them together right here at this point. I would just take my new doubled binding thread and tie it to that spot right there. Um, and I would probably just use a overhead knot and slide it up right against my binding. Um, I just... I, I can't really am surprised that I didn't have to have um, more thread throughout. I have to finish up my last few pages and I thought you guys might like to watch the rest of that. Um, then I will show you how to tie off with the cover. I did decide to leave two blank pages in the front because if you followed this project, I used uh, this little book over here, this one right here, um, <laughs> and what I think I want to do is put this um, introduction page into my book so that the artists that were that whose pictures I used things like that are all right there in, in the front of the book um, 
And then, I, like I said, I want to write a little bit about the project and um, put a link to the projects, that kind of thing, in the book, just so I have that information for in the future. I'm not going to have a lot left, but I am going to have thread left. And that's uh, that just really does amaze me um, with as many pages as I had. Okay, I'm going to bring you in really close to show you how to finish the cover. Um, let me see here. Uh, okay, so this is my cover. And I am going to put the threads down through the top of the cover. Let me see if I'm, I need to make sure I'm staying in frame. Sorry, guys. Okay, then... When you pull them out, oh good, that's, my fingers are in the way, sorry. Okay, instead of coming back through the center, we're going to come back around the outside. Okay? Let me go over here and do that again. I'm going to go from the top down. And then instead of going between the pieces, I'm going to go outside the pieces, like so. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way, guys. I'm, I'm real sorry here. We're splitting the threads and pulling it to the outside. Okay, now I'm going to snug all of these up. So now they're on the outside and we are going to tie a knot. And I'm going to do my best to tie a square knot, but I'm going to actually tie it probably three times. Wax linen is also really good about not coming undone.
I see my cover is tied on. Okay. Now, let me back back out a little bit. Okay. So now I have these little threads. And just to make sure they're anchored well, I am going to put some beads on them. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to switch glasses. Though. Those don't quite work. What I have are some seed beads. I have a couple of different size seed beads. Seed beads are little beads. You can put whatever you would like on there. I'm just going to put in some little seed beads and I am not going to put a ton on. Let me put them in my hand. Okay, so I have two sizes. I have this size. Maybe I should pick them up at the same time. Just a second. this size and this size. These are size 6 seed beads. These are size 11 seed beads. Seed beads are the smaller the number, the bigger the bead. Okay? Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread on little batch of these beads. I don't really want a ton on there. I just I just want to finish it off. Let's see. That's 5. I think that will look good. And then I'm putting the tiny bead on because the tiny bead helps with um the knot not slipping. And I like to use a needle, but since my pokey tool is handy, what I do is I just do an overhand knot. I put my pokey tool in and slide it right up to where the bead is. Now I'm, I have to hold it there. There you go. Um, and then as I slide the knot on, the knot comes out right where I want it to. Okay, and I always double tie it.
Okay, guys. Um, this is the tutorial for doing what's called the slip knot binding. It is not my idea of binding, original idea of binding by any means. I will put a link to the uh, blog post, I think is what it is, that I found it on. Um, I've used it a lot in different projects. I love it. I love the fact that you can bind single sheets with it, which a lot of the bindings you cannot do. I like, oh, let me oh, back you out a little bit. Okay, I like the fact that the book, now this book is, is very, very thick, see, so it's, it's not going to lay real flat when you open it, but normally the book lays very flat. Um, I just have to hold this side up. It does lay flat, I guess it's just that it, um, it's not supported on the left hand side. Anyways, this is my finished or almost finished. I do want to write in it. I want to write about the project. I want to write some notes that I felt about the project um, as I was doing them, things like that. Uh, so, I'm going to read you a quote from my 1001 Ways to Creativity book, and then I'm going to go on and do the next project. Oh, by the way, I will be doing a complete flip of the book when I get a chance. Don't just learn new things. Feel new things, too. Okay, guys. Go have fun. Make some art. Bye-bye.